Hello and welcome to another MI How To video. My name is Tom Clark, I am your host, and on today's How To, we're gonna talk about avoiding relubricating with incompatible greases. There's more to know than you think in helping us out from NSK. Tim Jacina. Tim, welcome, man. Great to have you back. Hi, Tom. It's great to be back. Hey, Tim, you know, I didn't really know that there was any difference between greases that would cause a problem. I mean, I look at grease, I see what you have on the counter, there's lots of different colors, but I, I honestly, I thought everything was the same consistency as peanut butter. I'd like to start by talking about general grease composition. There are three basic components, a thickener that gives grease its consistency and holds the second and third components, the base oil that does the real work of reducing friction, and additives that perform various functions. Okay, I got that. Three parts, thickener, base oil, additives, right? Correct. Okay. And it is the blending of the different types of each component that all lubricant manufacturers perform that lead to the countless different greases on the market. Well, you know, I mean, I see all the greases here that are on the table, but there's just three components. So really, how does incompatibility happen? Good question, Tom. Each of the components is made up of a number of different types. For instance, the thickener soaps can be based on lithium, calcium, sodium, aluminum, and others, while the non-soaps include polyurea, PTFE, whose trade name is Teflon, and clay or bentonite. Okay, well, what about the base oils then? Among the base oils, there are mineral oil, synthetic oils such as PAOs and esters, fluorinated oils, and silicone oils. There are countless additives, many of which are not listed on the packaging. Okay, well, with so many of those things coming together, some of which we don't even know of, how do you avoid the problems of incompatibility? But before you answer that, what is incompatibility of greases? Just like you to get to the heart of the matter. <laughs> well, I, want to, I want to know what's going on here. When different greases are mixed, a chemical or structural interaction between the thickener or additive systems of the different greases, which would be classified as incompatible, may occur. Okay, well, if it does, well, what happens to the grease? Does it just break down or what? There are several aspects. The consistency of the grease can change either by becoming soupier or soft or conversely by stiffening. There can be abnormal oil separation or bleeding that may lead to purging or loss of the oil from the area requiring lubrication. The grease's performance additives may act antagonistically, adversely affecting the lubrication performance, such as protection against friction, wear, rust, or corrosion. So there really is no upside to mixing greases. It's just not going to work. No, Tom. If possible, using the same grease is always recommended. Okay, but what if the same grease isn't available for some reason? What then? Don't worry. There's a compatibility chart that can help. Okay. When you know the thickener of the current grease, pick from the options along the top row, then drop down that row and find the replacement grease's thickener from the options along the side. Yeah, and that's the chart that we're looking at right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. Where the two meet, mm -hmm. the letter in the box will show if the two greases are compatible with a C, incompatible with an I, or moderately compatible with an M. Well, come on, Tim, that, that seems pretty simple. These are assessments of the risk of mixing the greases. This generic table used throughout the industry really relates solely to the structural stability of the grease mixtures that impact the consistency we discussed earlier. For C, the risk is low. For I, the risk of significant hardening or softening is high. M has a medium risk. Okay, well, what can be done to avoid any risk of incompatibility that might damage the equipment? I, I don't want to do that. That could ruin bottom line, downtime. What do you recommend? The way to do that is always use the same grease or completely remove it from the bearing, sleeve, joint, or whatever prior to converting to the new grease. Sounds like great information, Tim. Thank you so much. An important topic, relubing that appears so straightforward, but there is a lot to consider to do it right. Thanks again, Tim. Thank you too, Tom, for this opportunity to appear again and help your viewers do a good job. All right, that was Tim Jacina. He's with NSK. If you have any questions about anything you saw here today, contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. Uh, as you notice, we didn't have our PPE on today. Didn't really need it, but remember, whatever the job calls for, make sure you're wearing the proper PPE. That's priority number one. Number two, head to the website mihowto.com and you can catch more videos with great information just like this one with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Thanks for watching.